me start by thanking everyone for participating in the second summit of democracies, for democracy, I should say. But more importantly, thank you for the work you've put in over the last 15 months to deliver on commitments you made to each other and to our peoples for the first summit of, from the first summit of our democracy. Look, you know, that's the power of these summits. Not just to speak high-minded words and shine a spotlight on those critical issues, but to galvanize action and translate to concrete progress for people around the world. That's how we make democracy deliver for everyone. And here's what I hope everyone gathered here and everyone watching around the world takes away from this summit. It's working. It's working. You know, when we gathered here in December of 2021, the sentiment in too many places around the world was that democracy's best days were behind us. Democracy had declined by some measures for 15 consecutive years. But this year, we can say there's a different story to tell. Thanks to the commitment, thanks to the commitment of leaders and global uh, gathered today and the persistence of people in every region of the world, demanding their rights be respected and their voices being heard, we're seeing real indications, and real indications, that we're, at a, we're turning the tide here. As I often say, we're at an inflection point in history here. When the decisions we make today are going to affect the course of our world for the next several decades, for certain. We're going forward from this summit. Our job is to keep building on our progress so we don't start heading in the wrong direction again, to keep the momentum going. This is a turning point for our world toward greater freedom, greater dignity, and greater democracy. Here in the United States, we've demonstrated that our democracy can still do big things and deliver important progress for working Americans. We're bringing down the cost of essentials like prescription drugs and health insurance premiums. We're giving families a little bit more, my dad used to say, a little bit more breathing room. We're rebuilding America's infrastructure, driving innovation and tackling the climate crisis while all while creating good union jobs and investing in communities that too often have been left behind in the past. We're also demonstrating the resilience of American democracy. During our free, fair, and secure elections last fall, America's first national election since January 6th attack on our capital, capital voters resoundingly and roundly rejected the voices of extremism, attacking and undermining our democracy. The right to vote, to have your vote counted, is a threshold of democracy and liberty everywhere in the world. And with it, anything is possible. Without it, in my view, nothing is possible. That's why earlier this year, I was proud to sign the Bipartisan Electoral Count Reform Act to ensure American elections continue to reflect the will of the American people and protect the peaceful transfer of power. You know, we're gonna keep working to further strengthen protections by working to pass what we call the John Lewis Voting Rights Advancement Act and the Freedom to Vote Act, they're just to further strengthen our democracy. And it's not just the United States that's, uh, that's delivering on our commitment and demonstrating power of the power of democracy. Angola. Angola is taking steps to build an independent judiciary, creating three new, region, three new regional courts of appeal, which are gonna help process cases more quickly. The, the Dominican Republic has modernized its anti-corruption law to create more than 100 anti-corruption offices at local levels. Croatia is implementing a multi-year anti-corruption plan to increase government transparency and better oversee public procurement. And there are many more examples I could give, but I'm not gonna take the time in many other countries for every person from countries taking the first steps toward reform to well-established democracies of people making real changes to protect and strengthen their democracy. Look, all we know, it's not easy. It's not, it, this has never been easy. Democracy is hard work. The work of democracy is never finished. It's never laid down and that's it. All you have to do is must be protected constantly. We have to continually renew our commitment, continually strengthen our institutions, root out corruption where we find it, seek to build consensus and reject political violence, give hate and extremism no safe harbor. We have to continue our efforts to advance the rights and dignity, and I emphasize the word dignity, of all people, including women and girls. You know, because wherever women and girls are under threat, democracy, peace, and stability are at risk as well. And we can't achieve our goals if we're leaving more than half the world's population out of the solution. We just heard from two incredible women 
who made an incredible case about, regarding Belarus. They're, they're not only women, they're leaders. They deserve, and all women deserve to be represented. Moreover, when we advance equality and racial justice we're in, and invest in young people, protect the LGBTQ plus uh, individuals, our societies are not only fairer, but they're stronger and more successful. Democracy demands full and equal participation of all, all of our citizens. That's how we unleash the human potential and put ourselves in the strongest possible position to take on the shared challenges. And I, I emphasize shared challenges. And when democracy stand together, we reinforce and amplify each other's efforts to great effect. And we've seen it over and over again. Democracy stepping up to lead and to solve problems together not just for our own people, but for the world. From our work to coordinate a global response to the COVID-19 pandemic to strengthen global health security, so we have better, we're better prepared to prevent and respond to future global health threats, to our commitment to raise our ambitions on climate goals that we have, to preserve our planet, literally preserve our planet for future generations, to making sure parents can feed their children strengthening food security by building more sustainable and resilient food systems around the globe. And the, the unprecedented unity, the unprecedented unity we've seen from democracies condemning Russia's brutal war of aggression against Ukraine and standing in solidarity with the brave Ukrainian people as they defend their democracy. <clears throat> so today, the United States is building on our enduring commitment to boost democracy globally. At the first Summit of Democracy, I launched a presidential initiative for democratic renewal, committed more than $400 million to shore up transparent and accountable governance, support for media freedom, to fight for international fighting international corruption, stand with democracy and democratic reformers, promote technology that advances democracy, defend elections. Now, Working in close cooperation with the United States Congress, we plan to add another $690 million for new funding for the presidential initiative over the next two years. And over the course of three years, my administration intends to work with Congress to commit $9.5 billion across all our efforts to advance democracy around the world. We're all safer when that occurs. We're creating a new Bureau for, of Democracy and Human Rights and Governance at USAID implement many of these funding commitments to enhance our support for democratic initiatives globally. You know, one key focus of our, demo of our democracy work will be in making sure that technologies can continue to develop, the, continue to develop that are used to advance democratic governance, not used to undermine it. As part of this, early this week, I signed an executive order here in the United States to restrict U.S. government's use of commercial spyware that has been abused to target dissidents, activists, and journalists around the world, including in the United States. U.S. taxpayer dollars should not, should not support companies that are willing to sell their products to abate human rights and violations, and, and uh, excuse me, abate human rights violations. And I want to thank those countries who are joining us this week in committing to regulate the use of commercial spyware. This effort is one of many, many my administration is leading in the digital space for strengthening tools for internet freedom, to better protecting activists and journalists from cyber threats, harassment, abuse, and, 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 and shaping emergency, emerging technologies like artificial intelligence so that they deliver and develop things that are in line with our values, our values. And as you can probably tell, Strengthening democracy is a subject about which I am somewhat passionate. I believe this is the defining challenge of our age. And today, we can say with pride that the democracies of the world are getting stronger, not weaker. Autocracies of the world are getting weaker, not stronger. That's a direct result of all of us, all of us coming together with confidence in ourselves and conviction in our cause. Governments from around the globe representatives of civil society and business, democratic activists and trade unionists, people who refuse to stand silent at attempts to erode their rights. All, all of us are making the choice to be leaders of our world and what our world needs 
to make democracy stronger, to keep the torch of liberty burning for ourselves and generations to come. We have to keep going, and we will. Thanks to the Republic of Korea for stepping forward to host the next Summit of, for Democracies. And we'll sustain this forum as a driver of progress, for progress, and the anchor for our commitment to one another. So thank you all again for participating. I look forward to all of you, uh, each one of you, to hearing from you. And I know uh, I'm not going to turn, uh, turn this uh, over to uh, the president of Slovakia. Madam President, it's all yours. President Biden, Excellencies, dear all, thank you for bringing us together. This is the time we must all mobilize. We need to defend and strengthen democracy. As a NATO and European Union member, Slovakia will do its share, not just in Ukraine, our neighbor. Russia's aggression is a threat to global peace and democracy. Our support, including military aid, helps the Ukrainians protect their rights in line with the UN Charter. The world support for Ukraine's defense fight must continue for as long as it takes. This is our joint investment in peace and democracy. But we must also do more to strengthen democracy at home. Our citizens need to see that democracy responds to their needs. The democracy guarantees true equality before the law, better public service, more transparency and less corruption. They must feel that democracy helps bridge, not amplify differences. Slovakia had a productive year of action. We focus on improving the rule of law and our judicial system. Independent judiciary must be a public service available to all citizens and businesses. We introduced a new court system, which has increased accountability of judges and prosecutors while preserving their independence. Corruption is another major threat to democracy. It destroys public trust in our institutions. We set up a new independent agency to protect whistleblowers. Our register of beneficial owners helps prevent money laundering in our public procurement system. It will serve as a legal standard across Europe. We invite other global partners to join. Democracies also face attacks on free media and increase of disinformation. These are mostly spread through social media. We cannot be naive and allow freedom of speech to be a cover for verbal crimes, hate speech on lies. Five years ago, a young Slovak investigative journalist and his fiance were murdered for his work. Last year, a radicalized teenager killed two young queer people in the streets of our capital. He got radicalized on social media. In response, we launched a system to protect journalists if they face threats. We also increased our support for media freedom and independent journalism in Ukraine and the Western Balkans. But we must do more and increase the accountability of social media platforms. Their business model is based on encouraging the lowest of emotions, polarization and fragmentation. Dear all, we are living in times of several crises. We cannot allow democracy to be the victim of this crisis because democracy is the solution. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, President Chapatova. Uh, we'd like to turn now to uh, Malawi President Chakwera. Mr. President. Your Excellency, Mr. Jo Joseph Biden, President of the United States of America, Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, when Ukraine came under attack just over a year ago, every democracy represented at this summit understood that this was an aggression not just against Ukraine, but against liberty itself. It was therefore altogether appropriate and right for every nation that loves freedom to not only condemn it with words, but to stand with Ukraine in, with action. 
When I spoke with President Zelensky a few months ago to pledge my support of his country's cause, it was out of my conviction that when any democracy comes under attack in a way that claims the lives of hundreds of its citizens, displaces hundreds of thousands of its people, destroys its economy and infrastructure, and threatens the enjoyment of freedom and human rights within its borders. It is simply not enough for other democracies to offer words of solidarity. It is therefore commendable that the nations gathered here have continued to give Ukraine the resource support it needs to safeguard its liberty. And I pray that this deployment of support continues. My appeal today is that this same spirit be extended to democracies that are also under attack from a different adversary, climate change. In the last three weeks, Tropical Cyclone Freddy has killed over 500 Malawians with just as many still missing, has destroyed over 40 roads washed away over 100,000 homes, leaving over half a million people homeless, and their enjoyment of freedom and human rights in jeopardy. And considering that Malawi did not bring this attack on itself, but is suffering the consequences of industrial actions by other nations, I ask you this one question. Is it not a moral duty for you who love freedom to come to Malawi's aid with substantial resources for relief and reconstruction that address the global challenge of climate injustice? I believe it is. So I implore you all to respond to Malawi's present distress call with more than words of solidarity and crumbs of tokenism. That is the only way we can show the world that we are as committed to seeing democracy deliver climate justice in the global south. While we are grateful for the initial support we received, I must commend President Zelensky's approach. For well, his government has taken the initiative to first ask us what we need so as to respond in ways that make a lasting difference. That's the way to go. I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, President Chakwara. Uh, we turn now to President Zelensky of Ukraine. Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mr. President Biden. Thank you for this summit for another step in consolidating the world in defense of freedom. Dear colleagues, now in the decisive time, and it is our joint responsibility, what exactly will determine this time? Will we pass on to our children and grandchildren the values of freedom that we have ourselves? Or will they have to fight for democracy from scratch? Modern generations of many democratic countries do not know from their life experience that freedom cannot be taken for granted. Most people can only learn about this from history textbooks, from the stories of wars of independence that took place generations ago and battles of freedom won by others. But the experience of the enemies of freedom is always fresh. They don't refer to textbooks. They know how to break democracy and destroy life. It is enough for them to have their slightest feeling that they can go unpunished and then evil acts. This is where the threat to our values comes from. This is why democracy is in danger. Ukraine knows what it is to fight for democracy right now and let our experience of preserving freedom during 